Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for doing this today. I appreciate you. Oh, man, thank you so much for having me. Very excited. Where, are you still in Texas right now? Yes, I'm in Austin at the moment. <laughs> oh, God, I love Austin. So I'm originally from Houston. So I, yeah, I grew up being able to drive to Austin like that. Oh, it's such a great city. Is it, was it your first time there? Yeah, yeah, it's so fun. I love it. It's so it's, sick. And everything about that. I mean, hopefully you've had time to like the food there is insane. And and, yeah. and obviously it's got such a great music scene and everything. Um, but seriously, I've got a handful of questions for you, but I'm so excited to talk with you. Are you all set and ready to go? All ready. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm going to jump into this. So this is such a, like an annoying question, but I'm going to go back to the beginning because I'm fascinated with this idea. At 13, you teach yourself guitar, you teach yourself piano, you start writing your own music and you hear a story like that and you think, well, like, of, of course, of course she did. Why wouldn't she? But something had to spark that. And I'm sort of curious, what was the moment where you just thought like, I, I have to do, I have to do this for myself? I think for me, it was just very therapeutic um, to kind of write and at a young age when you're growing up and you're going through a lot and you're trying to figure out what works. <clears throat> so I struggled a lot. I had really bad dyslexia when I was young and I really struggled at school. So for me, being able to write music, it was a way to let my emotions out and to, it was kind of like a better way to communicate with people. So I think it was like, for me, it was just an outlet that I kind of naturally went to. And I just always loved being, you know, front stage center, showgirl. Um, so for me, being able to also right was just a blessing and it was just so great to be able to do both of those together and just build my confidence over the years <laughs> but whenever you hear a story like that you always hear of someone like the first person taking a moment pausing and going wait this is not a normal 13 year old writing songs and playing piano and playing guitar like this this is something different who was that person for you that kind of paused for a moment and went wait you actually might have something so for me, it was my piano teacher. And um, when I, on my first ever lesson, I went in and I said to him, I was like, oh, you know, he was like, play me whatever you can play. And I said, I can do Adele, someone like you. And um, <clears throat> I can sing at the same time if that works. And he was like, okay, yeah, go for it. So he was very shocked that I even asked to do that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so it was really fun to, so I started singing and then he just lost his mind and was like, Mimi, you need to do something about this. Like, this is crazy. This is so cool. And actually ended up going and going to the receptionist, the school receptionist, and asking to call my mum so he could tell my mum that we really need to get into this. So it was just really crazy. That was, like, the first time it was, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I thought I'd played the wrong chord. I was so worried. I thought I did something wrong. Um, but he was just so mind-blown and excited. And I think for my mum, that's something that really, like, pushed her to, like, help me push myself. When was the last time you heard from him? Like he's, I'm assuming he's fully aware of everything that's been going on with you. Yeah, um, I'd say probably like a year ago now. I think where it, when it all kind of started to kick off is when he was like, oh, you know, just really just proud of me and thought, you know, this is amazing. Because I think from school I left when I was 16 and then I went mm -hmm. off to college just to do a bit more music school. So that was like the transition we were left at. And then to then see kind of what I've done coming out of college and all those kind of things he just was so excited for me so yeah it was it was really cool and i think you know even my school friends i'm still really close with all my school friends from oh, love that. so they're all just they will see the the process and the progress and they're just they think it's so cool <laughs> i'm sort of curious with your friends because with my friends uh, n by no means am i on on the level of success that you are but but with my friends they sort of look at what i do they're like because i've known them for so long they're like dude we are in no way impressed with what you do for a little like yeah like you you talk to like this this celebrity and that so like good for you well done are your friends impressed with this or is it one of those like well, look we know you way too well to be impressed by you i think yeah they're now at the point where they're just like they know it's it, i just i'm so i love it so much and being mm -hmm. able to travel around and do this as my job is just amazing so they're very much like excited when those big like those big news you know things come out but they're very chill, to be honest. Yeah. I think they just, they get used to it. It's like a norm, I guess, as well. Sure, and that's what, I would imagine that's what you need as well uh, on your end. So I was yeah. reading, you You mentioned Adele earlier, and I was reading about who some of your inspirations were. And some of them were, were people who I would expect, Adele and Amy Winehouse, Sam Smith. But then I also saw some names. I saw Louis Armstrong. 
I saw Nat King Cole. I saw Etta James. And those are the ones that I actually am really curious to want to talk about. I'm sort of curious what your introdu- what your introduction to their music was and how you sort of still feel maybe them in your music now. So I always grew up listening to jazz music and a lot of old older music just because my my dad's twin sister would always play piano to me since I was so young and sing with sing at the same time. So I think because they were like songs that I'd grown up with um, and it was just always like around me. And then I'd say, I'd probably say about 16 is when I really started to take that in as a genre Mm -hmm. and kind of take it in more as an interest and kind of just like see how I can like, how I can write with that element, even though I'm pop, it's still, I think for my, my voice, it's very soulful. So I think I've always been very inspired by those sounds and that genre of music. And it's just been something that's kind of grown within my own kind of like like path, I guess. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you ever heard yourself on the radio? Yes, I do. I Take filmed- me back to that moment. <laughs> um, so I actually filmed on my TikTok, which was hilarious. It was just crazy because that just seeing the reaction of it, it was amazing. Um, but I just basically, my management were like, right, this is going to be a time. And I was, I'd just done a photo shoot. So they told me to pull over and just listen to it and just just because they wanted to see what it was going to be like and everything and I was like oh I'll, you know I'll do that I'll pull over listen to it and I'll you know I'll just record myself see what it's like and the I just remember like the amazing introduction I think that just I got a, I got quite emotional because it was just such an incredible introduction and it was just shocking just to be able to like be in my car just been to work just done a shoot and then just to have that happen um, it was honestly just so incredible. And I don't think it, it, it honestly never gets old. When I hear myself on the radio, it just never gets old. <laughs> I love, no, but that's such a great like mentality and it's such a great reaction to have. You know, when it comes to like paths to success, I feel like the paths that artists take today vastly different than what they would have been 20 years ago or 30 years ago, or 40 years ago. And your path has been so interesting. You look at sort of uh, how much you blew up on TikTok, where, where your songs are featured and your songs are just going nuts. Uh, millions of views all over YouTube. I don't think there's a music video that you have that doesn't have over a million or two million views. I'm just sort of curious how that world, how the world of TikTok and YouTube uh, have really kind of changed, not just your path to success, but just the path to success of, of artists of kind of this era today. Um, yeah, so I, gen- I definitely think it's just been crazy i think to be able to have that platform like tiktok there for people that you know maybe don't have access to you know trying to get those labels to see them and Mm -hmm. you know all those managements um so for me i think it's definitely amazing just to see new talent be able to use that platform especially you know with being you know when we were in the pandemic and being locked away we just couldn't really you know there was no way of connecting with people so to be able to have that platform there um, and for young artists um, to be able to get noticed through that really. And I think it's something so incredible because I remember at 18 going through the whole label process, the very traditional way, to then actually launching my music in the pandemic through TikTok, through social media, and just seeing the difference and how much, like for even for your mental health, that you know, it's even so crazy because when I was 18 going in and out of those labels, it was very scary. You felt very you know, all eyes on you, there was that judgment, you were very scared, you wanted people to love you. But I think with your TikToks, you're free to share your songs and you're in your safe space and you're playing your instrument and teasing, you know, the songs that you want to tease. So um, yeah, it can be like, you know, it's all balanced and it's it's all got its own cons and um, advantages and everything. But it's definitely, um, yeah, just amazing just to see people take that in, you know, take that in their stride and, just once you also see how the, the views of the videos go to streams and how that translates into the real music world. It's just incredible. You know, and it's, it's obviously, I think, making a lot of people rethink the music industry, but also in a, in a way, I, which I feel like has to be great for you, it kind of gives you back, like it gives control of the art back to the artist. Like, you're, you know, it's not just yours and ones and, and you know, uh, figures to a bunch of people around a board meeting that couldn't play guitar if their life depended on it. Like, it, it feels like like your work is your work and you're in control of it now. A hundred percent. And I think that's something that I've really, that's why I've been such a big supporter of, 
of TikTok and everything is because you can release a song and know that, you know, if you want to make sure that song does amazing day one, mm -hmm. you just push on TikTok. And, you know, and I think it's quite interesting as well, because I say a lot to people like there's a lot more behind it than, you know, to getting a song to where you want it. And I think that's because I just I'm very on top of it on social media and making sure I'm always active. <laughs> yeah, it's such a like it's a cliche, but it's very much the like the whole tip of the iceberg. Like no one ever sees the work that goes in below yeah. the surface of the water. All they see is sort of the tip of it. Um, so you're on a, you're on a tour. You're you're head you're around the states right now. I'm talking to you in Texas right now, which is my home state. I'm sort of curious, like what it's been like, what what the stateside tour has been like for you, and and I guess just what what about the tour has been the most different than what you expected. Um, it's honestly just been amazing. Even yesterday when we were driving the tour bus, I just had a moment to myself thinking, seven-year-old me seeing that I'm driving in a tour bus around America from show to show, living the dream. I just had like this emotional moment. I, I just was incredible. Um, so just to be able to do that and see the fans and also grow out here and you know get more people to know me um, is just amazing. And I think for me, just seeing so many different parts of America. I've only ever been to LA and New York. So for me, being able to actually see the whole of America is just amazing. And just seeing the differences as well between each city is just so crazy. <laughs> Talk to me about the bus. Cause whenever I saw, I think you posted a, on Instagram, like a video or a picture of the bus. And I just thought like, what a great way to see America. Like, like, a, like a classic, that's such a classic thing. I'm just sort of curious like what your experience has been like just on the bus in general. It's honestly been so great. Um, all the crew in the band are amazing. I love them all so much. We've all known each other for years, so we're all very comfortable, um, which is great. Um, but yeah, it's it's just very like, you're always looking outside the window because there's always something to see. Mm -hmm. um, and it's cool as well, because overnight when we sleep, we travel a lot. Um, so we kind of wake up and then we're in another city and it's like, oh, and it's just like really cool. Um, but there are little times where in the mornings we have to drive a little bit of extra way. Um, so yeah, so just to be able to see the scenes outside and, you know, I think for a lot of us, it's the first time going around America. Um, so we all just get very excited together and just, you know, buzz each other up. <laughs> so you're a few weeks out from being here in Chicago with me. That's obviously Chicago right behind me. Yeah. What do you know about our city? Like, are you where in terms of like all the cities you're going to visit? Like, where does your excitement on Chicago rank? I am so, so excited to visit Chicago. I've heard the most incredible things. Um, a lot of my managers have been there, um, my management team. So, yeah, I mean, they always, they keep hyping me up about it. And I've got some friends that have been. So, yeah, I'm really excited to go. <laughs> and there, there are, like, some things, like, the bean is just, like, right there. It's, like, literally just two blocks. So I can almost kind of see it from here. Um, you you got to, you know, you got to do the pizza. They're, like, they're like, sort of the very cliche, like, if the bulls are in town, you got to go see the bulls. Um, yeah. So there's, like, like sort of, you know, cliche things that you got to do, but you got to do them while you're here. Um, yeah. You mentioned uh, getting a chance to meet the fans. And I wanted to touch on that because I feel like you're in such a really unique position right now where you're reaching this degree of fame and fandom, uh, but you're still accessible in that like a fan has a chance to meet you. And the, how do I phrase this? Like the bigger you get, the harder it's gonna be for the average person out there to have this kind of opportunity to meet you. So in a really interesting way, this is like a, a closing window that people have before you get to that level where there's gonna be a team of security like stopping you. So like, this is a really great chance for, for fans to sort of like, I, I guess to phrase it right, like to meet you while they have the chance, would you say? Yeah, I think it's definitely, um, you know, it's it's crazy to see the process because to even see like Tate McRae and then to me like the, you know, the difference between those two teams and like, you know, how security works and how, what you know, what stage you're at in America where those things do start to come into play. Um, and yeah, it's just for me, I think these times are just the most important to be able to really get to know fans, fans get to know me. And I, you know, throughout my whole career, I want to be, I want to stay as personable and, you know, relatable to everyone. And I want to be able to do all that I can that I would do at the start. Um, but yeah, I think it's just for me, these times are the best. And me and all, me and all my band have been saying how incredible just to be able to go around and, just get people to know you like that is honestly the magic in it and I think it's just taking it day by day and in my own stride and just excited to see what's in the future really and then for all the fans as well. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to cut you loose on this one because I know you have a lot going on today. Um, one of my favorite actors, uh, Jack Lemmon, passed away like 15 years ago. He has a, a, a quote where he says, whenever you get to the top, you got to know when it's time to send the elevator back down. So I was wondering if you could think right now, 
there's a 13 year old girl who's trying to learn guitar, trying to learn piano, starting to put pen to paper and write her own songs. And cause she's got something that she wants to say, what did, what piece of advice would you give her uh, in, like in that position that, that you were in all those years ago? I would say believe in yourself completely. I think at a young age, I'd hear that a lot and I would never really be able to understand exactly what that meant. Um, until I then went through a process where I was comparing myself a lot to others and I wasn't really sure what my sound was or where I was going to be heading. Um, but for me, the only reason I got through that is because I believed in myself and I just didn't let the penny drop and I kept going and going. So I think for me, it's just always, my advice would be always work hard, even the baby steps, keep organized, keep confident and believe in yourself because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And also enjoy it, enjoy it all, be happy and you don't have to do this. You don't have to do it the same way everyone does. Do it in your own way. That's the magic in it. <laughs> I love that. Mimi, you are the absolute best. I'm going to be at the show whenever you're here in Chicago. I follow you. You're on Instagram and you're great. So seriously, I'll, I'll tag you in all the stuff whenever we get this. Obviously, thank it's going to air here in Chicago, but we'll put it online as well. But seriously, you're fantastic. And thank you for such a great conversation. Thank you so, so much for having me. Have an of amazing day. <laughs> you too. Talk to you later. Bye, Bye guys. Going, we don't need roads.